Everyone knows you should make your commits atomic, but no one can actually tell you what that means. In this video, I'm gonna break it down for you, I'm gonna share the benefits, and I'm gonna leave you three strategies you can use when building up some changes. So let's jump in. So first, what does atomic even mean? Let's use an example from a database. Imagine we have some table where we have a title and a body. No matter what, we never want our DB to be in a state where I've added some new title and the body is non-existent. We want to make sure that either both the title and the body are written or neither of them are written. And the same goes for editing a row as well. So what does this look like with code? In this example, we've got some word game and the rules are you get one point per letter in your word. Now we want to change the rules so a vowel is worth 10 points. Well, how do we do this? What we don't want to do is start by adding some variable, using it, and then adding in the actual code that declares a variable and sets the value. Having these changes in two separate commits is like having a write to only one column in our DB and then the other. This just puts your code in a broken state in the first commit because is vowel isn't declared. In some languages that might be a runtime error, in others it might not even compile, which is the case with Go here. And more importantly, it's not even gonna have the behavior you want. So obviously we don't wanna split that up. What we do wanna do is have one commit that declares a variable, sets its value, and uses it all at once. Either it's there or it's not, you're never gonna be in an in-between state. Another example of atomicity is the classic database transaction. So let's say we have two accounts here and we are sending money from Alice's account into Bob's. We never wanna be in a state where we've removed money from Alice's account without that money being credited to Bob. And we never wanna be in a state where we've credited the money to Bob, but we didn't actually deduct it from Alice's account. We either want both of these rows written or neither of them. And what this looks like in code is changing a function without also changing its call site and any expectations around it. We have our function that checks if something's a vowel or not. And now we're told we want to include Y if it's the first letter. We say, okay, easy enough. What we don't want to do is first commit changes to this function, changing the function signature and the behavior, then committing some change to its call site and then lastly, updating the test to work with this new behavior. What we want is all of these changes to happen all at once. Some other examples of this would be changing the return type of a function without updating its call site or changing the behavior of some code without also committing the changes to the tests. This brings us to what I think of as the golden rule of Git. It's that every commit should compile and run and pass any tests or other CI that you have. And what we get from this is code that you can check out at any point in the code base and interact with. Will all the functionality be there? No, but you could either run some functions, write some other tests, interact with it in some way. And this makes running git bisect so much easier because you never have to worry about skipping a commit that won't compile or run. If you do it right, you can merge more often with less fear and when in doubt, it's always much easier to squash several working commits together into one larger commit than it is to take one larger commit and break it up. Try to think of squashing commits as a constant time operation, but taking a commit and breaking it out as exponential time. Breaking up one big commit that should actually be three smaller, that's some work. Breaking up something twice as large is gonna be four times the work. All right, now that we're on the same page about what an atomic commit is, why we wanna work this way, let's talk about how we could build up a new feature one atomic commit at a time. I like to think about this as bridging some kind of gap. So on one side, you're here, and on the other side is the functionality you're trying to get to. So how do we get there? One strategy is to work from the far side back to you, connecting it at the end. So let's say we have a feature that we wanna to add to our app. The first step might be a commit that add some code to read from the database. The next commit might be a template that renders some of this data. The next commit might be adding a request handler that actually handles a request, calls this code to read from the DB and renders this template. And lastly, we connect everything by adding an entry into the router. And now we can go from one side across to the other. Another approach you can take is starting on the near side and building your bridge out. So in this case, we start by adding a real entry to the router but our request handler 
is actually not going to do anything and it's going to stop the execution of code here. You can imagine this as a barricade and a bridge out sign. So now we flesh out the request handler, but now the template is where we stop. So maybe this is an empty template. Maybe it's just plain text. doesn't really matter. Next, we flesh out the template and now we're not actually reading anything from the DB. So maybe this function is just returning some hard coded values. And lastly, we add real code to read from the DB, removing that last wall, and we can go all the way across. But one other way to think about this is imagine you are throwing a rope across the gap, and then you're gonna flesh it out as we go. So we start by adding a real entry to the router, but maybe the request handler, the template, and the code that reads from the DB are all super thin. Maybe this always returns an empty list, the template is empty, and the request handler doesn't really do much. Now we're gonna beef it up a little and we're gonna add real code that reads from the DB. Next, we're gonna end to end, add some changes to the request handler and the template. Maybe we're really displaying back the data that comes from the DB, but we're only handling one of the cases. And now lastly, we're handling the edge cases and we've got our router, our handler, our template, and our code that reads from the DB are all working fully fleshed out. So there you have it. Hopefully now you have a good understanding of what it actually means to have atomic commits, why you want your branches to be built up this way, and a few different ways to think about building up a set of changes. Peace.